our online classroom. My name is Karolina Andronik. I am a teacher of English at the private institution Lyceum of Creativity and Inventiveness Prometeo Prim from Kishinev. As you already got used to, today we are going to continue working from your textbook and today we have Unit 5, Lesson 4, 1. Today we are going to cover pages 84-85. In this video we are going to pronounce the rhyme as quickly as we can go through some conversational phrases, discuss the code of the lesson, and cover the active vocabulary of the lesson. Are you ready? Let's start. Have a look at the screen. The first thing that you see is pronunciation, and the task says that we should read as quickly as we can. I'll try to do my best, and I advise you to do the same thing in front of the screens at home. If all good people were clever, and all clever people were good, the world would be nicer than ever. Good job, everyone. You see a picture. Next to the picture, there is the lesson quote. It says, charity begins at home. I want to challenge you. In the next couple of seconds, you can pause the video, by the way, and try to brain write a few ideas. How do you understand the quote of the lesson? All right. Guess what? I have also done my home task, and what you see on the screen uh, you see some words that help me to brain write the idea that the quote of the lesson expresses. So, what do you see here? Help. When we speak about charity, of course, we mean help, acceptance, integration, compassion, of course, security, charity, tolerance, support, independence, why not? Protection, of course, assistance, attention. And why not? The key word if you ask me, is generosity. If you have the same words, good job. Let's go on. Next, that you see on this slide, there are some conversational formulas. They are named in the textbook, but actually they're conversational phrases. Now I have a challenge for you. Which of the phrases below will you use in certain situations when consoling someone? Consoling. How do you understand the word consoling? If you say consoling, do you mean comfort? Yes, and you're absolutely right. When you console someone, you comfort someone. Remember the previous words that we had on the previous slide? All right, so let's cover the formulas. Don't get upset. Please take it easy. Please relax. It is not as bad as you think. All right, and we have uh, some responses. Let me reassure you about. Don't worry, please. That's really no reason to. So these are some of the key phrases that you can use when comforting or consoling somebody. Good job, everyone. Have a look at the picture that you have on this slide. Do you recognize the symbols? Yes, that's right. Today we're going to cover the topic of compassion and empathy. So what you see here, you see the signs or the symbols of the people who have impairments or disabilities. All right, so remember, let's have a look at the picture. You have some symbols of uh, people with impairments or disabilities. The first one, what do you think it, it represents? The physical or the mental disability? That's right, the physical disability, because you see a wheelchair, right? If you go to the next picture from the same symbols, yes, absolutely right, so hearing impairment, and then you see the sign language, and then you see the braille system, and then you see a blind person because you can see a cane. All right, good job, everyone. So we, we tackled the subject what charity means. We had some keywords. Next thing that you see on the slide, we have to cover discussion points. And I want you to think, what is charity to you? Try to jot down the first things that come into your mind. And then after that, I want you to uh, think about whether you participated in any charitable acts or maybe you have taken part in any charitable events, maybe at your school, maybe within your community. And as uh, we already tackled this, we try to see the differences between physical and mental handicap. 
let's go on. In order to sound as natural as a native speaker, we need to cover or to master some vocabulary. And what you see on the slide, you see the active vocabulary of the lesson. I will read and pronounce the words and phrases for you. I will read twice, you listen, and you can repeat in front of the screen at home. We have to cover two parts of speech, nouns and adjectives. I will start with nouns. Handicap, lack, shortage, deficiency, ability, disability, compassion, empathy, sympathy, charity, braille, braille system, crutch, and dot. Let's go to the adjectives. Deaf, deaf. Deprived, blind, blind, severe, dumb, dumb. Pay attention to the silent letters. Now it's your turn to practice. Remember, you can always pause the video and repeat as many times as you want. Good job, everyone. Let's go on. All right, time to practice. What you see on the slides, there is an exercise and the task says that you need to replace the underlined words in the sentences with one of the words below. The words are in green. You can pause the video, work individually. Welcome back. Let's check together. In spite of her mental deficiencies, she manages to do a good job. So the word that you see underlined is efficiency and if you have written disability, good job. You feel pity when looking at people with physical disabilities. Now have a look. Pity and physical disabilities. Compassion, pity, and physical disabilities, handicap. After an accident, he temporarily lost his walking capacity. We have capacity here. And if you have written ability, good job. My cousin broke his leg so he used a support when walking. If you have written crutch, good job. And the last sentence, he has been suffering from a serious illness since his childhood. Serious. If you have written severe, well done. Now, don't worry if you don't have the same answers as you see on the slide. You can always practice, because practice makes perfect. Let's go on. Another challenge for you, another practice. Activity. This time you have to match the words with their definitions. Now the same thing. You can pause the video, work individually, and then we come back and check together. Ready? Let's check. So what deprived means? Deprived, this is kept from having things. Shortage, not enough or not at all. Lack, not enough. Now pay attention. Shortage and lack, there is a slight difference. Shortage, not enough or not at all and lack not enough charity kind and generous attitude so pay attention charity this is attitude remember about the paragraph i asked you to write yes you should have the word attitude in it empathy the ability to share another person's feelings as if they were your own what a very small round mark point we talked about braille system and in braille system we use dots Braille, a system of printing for blind people. Blind, someone who cannot see because his eyes are damaged. Deaf, someone who is unable to hear anything. Dumb, someone who is completely unable to speak or mute. Good job, everyone. Let's go on. So what do we have on this slide? You see here the Braille system. And from the definition, the Braille system is a system full of dots that help blind people to read. I have challenged myself and what you see below the Braille system, you see my name written in Braille system. Let me confess, it was challenging. I know that previously you have studied the sign language and you have the alphabet here on this slide and you also have a phrase, I love you. I also love you. We're about to finish lesson four, first part of unit five. Let's recap what we have studied in this video. Today, we pronounced the rhyme as quickly as we could, went through some conversational phrases, discussed the quote of the lesson, and of course, we covered the active vocabulary of the lesson. 
Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Stay home and learn English. Bye.